Hi, it's Dwyer, February 5th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about Floyd Mayweather's planned fight against Logan Paul. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, life has illusions, right? Life also has truths. We recognize the truths. We all understand that none of us could train for six months, a year, part-time, and expect to beat a great tennis player, an old master, right? You understand that your odds of even having a competitive match against a Roger Federer or a Serena Williams are next to none. Most of us wouldn't pay to watch our neighbor, no matter how much the neighbor works out at the gym, go up against Roger Federer or Serena Williams because the understanding is that the old master, the pro, is just going to be too advanced for the newbie. Likewise, we all understand that I can't go to the country club and try to figure things out part-time for six months to a year and then go on the golf course and beat a Tiger Woods or a Carrie Webb. Right? That That's not going to attract a crowd. If your neighbor says, hey, I'm going up against Tiger Woods, you understand not a lot of people are going to watch that on TV. Right? Maybe your neighbor can hang for a hole or two. After that, your neighbor is going to fall apart. Well, for some reason, everyone thinks that they could be an actor. And everyone thinks that they could be a boxer. Right? I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's the idea that all of us have been in a fight at some time in our lives. And we somehow feel that that equates to putting on gloves, going in the ring with not just a professional, but a Hall of Famer in the craft, right? Hall of Fame level. And somehow we think that we're going to be able to land that lucky punch. Now that fantasy has made Floyd Mayweather a lot of money, right? Mayweather won a title at 154. That's the biggest he was for a professional boxing match. And so, of course, you have guys who are 6'2", 199 pounds, like Logan Paul, who feel that, hey, I'm a bigger man. I hit, <laughs> I hit harder than Floyd, right? At least I think I do. Why can't I go in there and rough up this smaller man? And, of course, you have a lot of people who want to see the fight. Because they think, look, anybody can box, right? That's the fantasy. We'll just overlook the fact that boxing structure, that a lot of these uh, fighters, including F Floyd Mayweather, have competed in the Olympics, right? Have won medals in the Olympics, competed as amateurs, then competed as pros and worked their way up to the world-class level. No, no, the fantasy has big guys jumping the line, right? Somehow, because Logan Paul is 6'2 and 199 pounds, he feels that he can compete with the Roger Federer's, the Serena Williams's, the Carrie Webb's, the Tiger Woods's of the world, in their craft. Think about it. Well, let's just say... I don't think Logan Paul has any chance of beating Floyd Mayweather, right? Floyd, you know, I don't know what can be said here, but I believe Floyd fed into the illusion because Floyd Mayweather knows that he was not Floyd Mayweather in the early rounds against Conor McGregor. I felt that Floyd, who was one of the hardest to hit in the sport of boxing, 
whether it's early in his career or late in his career, right? Floyd's defensively blessed. Floyd sees the shots coming when the guy's thinking about throwing them, right? Floyd's defensively blessed. Floyd came out for the McGregor fight, and Floyd decided, hey, I'm going <laughs> to hang around the pocket. I'm going to let this get a little bit rough and tumble. I'm going to allow this guy to hit me a few times, right? You definitely got the feeling Floyd was playing poker. Floyd was playing to the fans. Floyd understood. The fans wanted to see. Conor McGregor have some moments. So Floyd, in very uncharacteristic fashion, came out and let that fight linger. Right? Don't get me wrong. Let's recall how that fight ends. It doesn't go the distance. Conor McGregor gets stopped in that fight. Well, of course, big guys, 6'2", 199 guys like Logan Paul, I'm sure looked at the tape and thought, hey, I could do better than McGregor. Right? Um, this is going to end badly for Logan Paul. The only thing that might stop Floyd Mayweather from getting a stoppage are his hands, which have been injured in the past. But understand, Logan Paul is too upright. Logan Paul, unlike Floyd, right? Floyd's defensively blessed. Logan Paul is not defensively blessed. What I want people to do, and I have the highlights in my favorites folder here on YouTube, is to look at the knockdown in the third round of his rematch against KSI. I thought Jack Reese, the referee, blew the call. By the way, this was the same referee who refereed the first Tyson Fury-Deontay Wilder fight. Right? I thought he did a magnificent job there. Right? Magnificent job. Well, here, he slipped up a little bit. KSI lands a great counter overhand right, and it drops Logan Paul, drops it. Jack Reese felt that the punch hit Logan Paul in the back of the head. I don't know how that punch what could be considered a rabbit punch, but the key is I want people to look at Paul and see how defenseless he is for not just that counter right hand, but for several counter right hands that KSI throws throughout the fight. Now, you know, we confuse very good fighters with great fighters, right? Understand, Floyd's not very good, he's great. Floyd can hit you with a counter straight right hand, but Floyd could also lead with the punch. Look at his fight against Robert the Ghost Guerrero. So understand, if Logan Paul is getting sloppy defensively and has his hands down around his waist, as he does for stretches of the KSI fight, Floyd doesn't even need to wait to counter him with the right hand. Understand, if Logan Paul is defenseless, Floyd can just come in and throw the right hand, and the key with Mayweather because he's defensively blessed, is he'll plan the sequence so he throws the right hand, and even if Paul is slick with it and it's a trap, Mayweather's going to be rolling away. He's going to have his defense up. You won't be able to counter Mayweather after he throws the straight right hand. Again, look at his fight against Southpaw Robert the Ghost Guerrero. How Mayweather's throwing lead right hands and then moving away. Right? The ghost, a professional fighter, not a dilettante. Not a guy who's a part time fighter like Logan Paul. No, the ghost, a professional fighter, a former champion, could not catch up with Mayweather. How is Logan Paul going to? Understand, Mayweather's best punch is his left hook. It's here trigger. Right? It's like Canelo's left hook. And Mayweather 
can cover ground with it. Look at his fight against Diego Corrales. Now understand, a guy like Logan Paul can't control pacing or spacing. His jab's a weak jab. Right? He's not the kind of guy who can walk you into a shoulder, which is what Floyd can do. So again, there's going to be a moment in this Floyd Mayweather-Logan Paul fight where Logan Paul, who got tired, think about it, in a six-round fight against KSI. Folks, by the fourth round, the guy had already hit the canvas. He's tired. His hands are already at his sides. Right? Think about it. Understand, professional prize fighters, understand that they need to go 12 rounds in a title fight. In fact, we call the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds the championship rounds. Right? Logan Paul here looks bone tired to me after three rounds. Now, I'm not kidding myself. I understand Father Time beats all of us. I understand that Mayweather, at his current age, might not have the reflexes that he did as a young man. Might not quite have the hand speed that he did as a young man. Might not have the timing that he had when he was fighting on a regular basis. Right? But make no mistake, he has more hand speed than Logan Paul. I mean, today, Logan Paul doesn't have anything remotely approaching Mayweather's hand speed. So Mayweather, with ring coverage on a left hook, could conceivably drop Logan Paul, like he did Diego Corrales. Not only that, you'll notice in the KSI fight, Logan Paul's best moments are when he comes in and holds KSI. I thought Jack Reese made a mistake when Logan Paul held KSI and then knocked him down right late in the fight while holding him. That shouldn't have been counted as a knockdown. Well, I'll just say this. Understand, Floyd's a counter puncher. He can lead. He's actually a switch, but he prefers to counter punch. A guy like Logan Paul who wants to get close enough to hold you before hitting you is tailor-made for a defensively blessed counterpuncher like Floyd Mayweather, right? Mayweather's defense is going to be tight, right? He'll have his chin tucked. He'll have everything tight. If you come in and you try to hold a Floyd Mayweather, while Logan Paul is reaching to hold him, Mayweather is going to be able to slip and hit him clean. Right? Trying to grab and hold a counterpuncher is a recipe for disaster. I see disaster written all over this fight for Logan Paul. I think if Mayweather wants, he could get this fight stopped just on volume. In other words, he hits him with the left hook. Logan Paul is momentarily dazed. Mayweather can come with the rest of the combination, make it so that the referee sees Mayweather land five, six, seven punches in a row against a clearly outclassed part-time boxer, right, who's moonlighting for the gig. I like Mayweather big here. I know this fight's going to be a commercial success. I'm sure they're going to sell the fight as a much bigger man against a much smaller man. And they're going to try to convince you that Logan Paul is in gym shape, right? That he is cut up, that he doesn't have a lot of body fat on him, right? Just understand that that's not the kind of shape that's boxing shape. When you're in boxing shape, you can go 10, 12 rounds. This guy was winded after three rounds against another amateur fighter. Right? He wasn't fighting. 
He wasn't fighting Mike Tyson. He was fighting KSI. And he was winded after three rounds. Now he's fighting an unbeaten fighter who's one of the best ever. Right? You know, I don't know how else to put it. This has disaster written all over it. It's like your next door neighbor playing Roger Federer in tennis with a lot of money at stake. I don't, <laughs> let's just say I take Federer in that match and I don't even know who your next door neighbor is. You better hope it's Djokovic or someone, right? I take Federer in that match. Uh, I'm taking Mayweather in this one. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me also point out, too, that back in the day, well before my time, in the uh, 30s, 40s, and 50s, you had fights where smaller men fought bigger men. Right? You know, Stanley Ketchell dropped Jack Johnson. The middleweight champ dropped the heavyweight champ, right? Bob Fitzsimmons was a middleweight champ. He went up, he won the heavyweight title. Don't think because a guy is smaller that the guy is weaker, right? These days, guys are afraid to enter the ring weighing several pounds less than their opponents. Back in the day, they did it all the time. Right? Guys didn't feel they had to squeeze every ounce out of getting to 147 for a welterweight fight. Right? So here you have a highly skilled future Hall of Famer, one of the best ever, fighting a bigger man who hasn't gone 12 rounds, has struggled, in fact, has lost to other amateurs, or at least one other amateur in KSI, whose defense doesn't look great, who wasn't an Olympian or a distinguished amateur. Right, folks? I know everyone thinks that they can be an actor or a boxer. That's an illusion. This is harder than it looks. Logan Paul is about to find that out. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.